This is a video that I've been very reluctant to make because it is such a controversial subject, but it's become an issue again, so I suppose I'll have to. I'll do my best to present the facts as objectively as I possibly can, and I would appreciate it if you didn't turn the comments section into one great big political argument. German train drivers are on strike again. What's causing it? What are the issues at stake? And what can you do if you're affected? First, your rights as a customer. If your train is cancelled due to a strike, or if you expect massive delays or missed connections and therefore decide not to travel at all, you can apply for a full refund. The best way to do this is to go to the ticket office in person. If you do decide to travel, all your usual rights still apply. If you're more than an hour late, you can get a form to fill in to apply for a partial refund. If you're forced to take a taxi or a coach or even spend a night in a hotel, under certain circumstances you may be able to get that refunded as well. So, what's this strike all about? Well, the main players are Deutsche Bahn, Germany's largest rail operator, Gewerkschaft Deutsche Lokomotivführer, the main train drivers union, Eisenbahn und Verkehrsgewerkschaft, a much bigger union representing other workers within the DB, and a new law working its way through the German Parliament. Here's the problem. GDL represents most train drivers, but it also represents some workers from other related professions such as train guards or restaurant car staff. But most people in those professions are actually represented by the EVG. The EVG had agreed paying conditions with DB, but then GDL came along with their demands not just for train drivers, but for other workers represented by their union as well. And this means that within the DB there would be some professions that would have two different sets of paying conditions. One set agreed by GDL and one set agreed by EVG. And this is something that DB says they cannot accept. Talks between the two sides have so far consistently failed, with each side accusing the other of refusing to compromise or cooperate. GDL claims that they have a constitutional right to represent all members of their union, including those that happen not to drive trains. Deutsche Bahn claims that this is completely unreasonable. Until a few years ago, the Federal Labour Court would simply have ruled that the largest union wins. But in 2010, they decided that they had no authority to make such a ruling, and so now the government is preparing a new law. This law would come into play when an employer is faced with conflicting demands from different unions. Then, the employer is required only to come to an agreement with the union representing the largest number of workers. So, in this case, DB would talk to GDL about pay and conditions for train drivers, but not for other staff. This law hasn't been passed yet, but it does have the support of most of the government and the larger unions. Smaller unions like GDL, though, argue that it would make it nearly impossible for them to represent their members' rights. They're even saying it would be unconstitutional, because it would restrict the rights of workers to form unions with any actual power. In this particular case, staff formerly represented by EVG switched to the GDL, as is their right under German constitutional law, because they felt that EVG was doing a very bad job of representing them. But if this new law comes into effect, they argue that GDL will no longer be able to represent them at all. On the other hand, critics of GDL see the entire dispute as nothing more than a power struggle between rival unions vying for members, money and influence, and that the whole talk about constitutional rights is just a front. It doesn't help that the current leader of GDL, Klaus Veselsky, has been accused by the former leader of running the union in an overbearing and authoritarian manner. The strike is also unpopular with the population as a whole, because so many people depend on the trains. They blame the union, and Veselsky is a very popular figure of hate at the moment. The union blames the company, and says that of course the strikes are going to hurt. That's the point of a strike. The big winners of all this, of course, are companies offering alternative modes of transport. Only recently have coach companies been allowed to compete directly with the railways, and they can hardly believe their luck. Car hire firm Zixt once named Klaus Veselsky as Employee of the Month. Whatever the truth, the situation is as deadlocked as it ever has been, with the union accusing the company of deliberately playing for time until the law is passed. That's due to happen very soon, but with many unions and some politicians claiming it to be unconstitutional, it is almost certain to be referred to the Federal Constitutional Court. And the outcome of that is anybody's guess. 
So it looks as if we're in for more of the same, seeing as how the talks are continually being derailed. Derailed. Get it? Derailed? Remember, you can always send me a postcard at this address. You can also find me elsewhere on the web. Visit rubos.com to find out how. And we also know that it's very unlikely that there is such a thing as a board which can do the ironing, although it would be nice.